Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Reddit Reading on Media Mania. On today's topic, ask Reddit. Babysitters, what's the most unsettling thing that's happened while you were babysitting? I occasionally watch my younger cousins when I want to earn some money. All three of them are below six years old, so it's already a hassle, but the youngest, around two years old, knows how to work every door handle and lock in the house. Last summer, when he was one, he would just up and get his boots on and leave the house to go play outside, and my aunt lives in a very secluded area on a farm, only a few other houses even somewhat close by with lots of fields and cows by their house. One time, I was sitting in their living room and the kids were supposed to be sleeping, and I went to check on the youngest and he wasn't in his bed and I flipped the heck out, I was 12 or 13 at the time, and went to check the backyard and he had his blanket and sippy cup with him and had almost reached the cows when I got to him. Needless to say, I only watch those kids when I really need money. I got a text from the kid's dad saying to lock all the doors and close the blinds. There was a shooter running around the street they lived on. I wasn't really able to get a lot of information, so I just turned the TV on and kept the kids distracted. Turns out there was a school shooting that had happened, and the kid's mom was actually at the school when it happened. She was fine, but it was extremely stressful because she was pregnant at the time. I was roughly 12, and we were visiting family while my parents were out of the country. My aunt offered to watch me and my two younger sisters, one nine and the other nine months old. I'd been half watching them the whole vacation, so the idea of having a break sounded fantastic. Barely half an hour after we get there, Aunt S says, Oh, I forgot. I need to take your cousin to dance class. You're good for watching the babies for an hour, right? My nine-year-old sister, who is close to Jay, went with her. This left me with my baby sister and my two-year-old hyperactive boy cousin. Okay, not happy about the forgotten dance class. This so-called offer to give me a break was a scam. Then the deluge. Somehow, everyone in the whole area, not a nice area by the way, knew there was a sitter. All of my aunt's friends plunk their toddlers down with a just let them watch TV and wave goodbye. Suddenly, I was babysitting nearly a dozen kids, ages ranging from 8 months to 7 years old. This was all before cell and mobile phones, so I couldn't track down my aunt, the baby it turned out, had a fever, and sicked up all the formula. The eldest boy started attacking the younger kids with slowly escalating violence, which wound up my boy cousin who was big into the Hulk. There was a lot of smashing. The hour passed, and still no aunt. Two hours. At three hours, I rang my grandmother in a complete state of meltdown because some guy had come in without any kids and was just staring at me. Shortly after, my aunt finally came home with my sister and cousin, all happy because they decided to hit them all. She was a bit baffled by all the extra kids, Creepy guy just smiled at her, then me, then wandered out the door. I was in tears. She mocked me about how I would never become a good mother if I couldn't handle this. Grammy arrives like some kind of saint on a charger, sweeps me up, and we drive home. Once there, I get cocoa and quiet. She calls my aunt back and rips her to shreds. The rest of the holiday, no babysitting, not even my sister's. My sister was furious for years that I disliked on S until, surprise surprise, she too got scammed. I was 11 babysitting for a neighbor who had four kids under the age of six. I was to watch them from noon until midnight. I was making dinner for them and the older boys were playing in the backyard while the nine months old was napping. I went to get them from the backyard and one of them had climbed a trellis onto the roof and wouldn't come down. After a long time of persuading him, he came down and I set them up to eat while I went to get the baby up. I go to her crib and she had dug in her diaper and smeared poop all over her, the cribs, and the walls. After cleaning them all up and putting them to bed, I laid on the couch. Next thing I know, the parents and another couple were standing over me. I had fallen asleep. They knocked, rang the doorbell, and finally climbed through the window above the kitchen sink. I was worn out, and they thought it was funny. I declined future jobs with them due to my embarrassment. My babysitter grew up and had kids, so I became her babysitter. She had five kids. One night, she asked me to watch them while she and her man went to a concert. Sure, no problem. I've watched them before. They just moved into this house. Around 9 p.m., the kids are asleep, and the friend I brought along and I are watching TV. All of a sudden, we hear what sounds like something hitting the front of the house. We're alone and in the middle of nowhere. It was scary. We talked ourselves into ignoring it until three of the five kids woke up and told us that they were scared. Finally, I decided to call the non-emergency line and explain the situation. They sent a car to the house, but decided the noise we were hearing had to be acorns falling from the trees above. I insisted there was no way it could be them because of how many we heard at once and how consistent it was. The police leave me. I was probably 19 at this point and my friend was 18. My friend and five kids under the age of 10 alone. As soon as they're gone, the noise starts again. Over the course of about 10 minutes, the sound of something hitting the house does not stop. All of the children are awake and scared. I reassured them everything is okay, 
and get them back into their rooms before calling 911 again. They try and tell me they're not coming. I tell them that if anything happens to us, it's on them. Suddenly, the police are on their way. They try to tell me it's the acorns again. They try to leave. I get upset. That's when I noticed something all over the ground. If they'd actually looked, they might have noticed it too. The cop tells me to go back inside and they finally start searching the property. About 15 minutes go by before they knock again. Remember, we're in the middle of nowhere. The only neighbor they had apparently saw my friend and I out with the kids earlier in the evening and decided it would be fun to spend the night terrorizing us. The noise we kept hearing? He was shooting the house with BBs. There were literally hundreds on the ground outside. It was so unsettling just because I knew something wasn't right and the police, as usual, were useless. It was my first time babysitting for this particular family. The kids were great, four in total, but the two babies were asleep when I arrived and the older two knew their bedtime routines and gave me zero hassles. The unsettling part was realizing around 4am that the mother was nowhere to be seen and there had been no indication that she would be out later than midnight. This was not something I had encountered with other families I babysat for, who usually went out to dinner and a movie or a work function and would be home by 11. I couldn't even begin to imagine what sort of horrible accident must have occurred to keep this mom away from home into the wee hours. It's a small town with no real nightlife, and the only thing open at this hour was the 24-hour servo on the highway. I eventually fell asleep on the couch and woke up at 8am in a cold sweat. Still no parent in the house, and the kids were waking up. We made breakfast and I put on cartoons while quietly freaking the heck out about whether to call my parents, the cops, etc. Cell phones were becoming more common, but the client hadn't left a number with me or any info about where she was headed. Just after 9am, she stumbled through the front door, heels in hand and hair a mess, and handed me $100 before passing out fully dressed in bed. I went back to babysit those kids many times. They were a great bunch of kids, and their mom paid really, really well. I just made sure to take my own set of PJs because there was a very good chance I'd end up staying over. I was nannying for a fairly low cost in high school for a family friend who had just divorced her abusive husband. I didn't complain because it was fun and she needed help. Well, one day, I come to babysit for the night, and she tells me her ex-husband had been coming over trying to take the kids. She told me if he came over to not answer and just call her or her boyfriend, who I hadn't met yet. Eventually, I get the baby to sleep, and me and the oldest are playing pretend when suddenly there's this banging on the door. I rush the oldest to the back room, which is the kid room, shaking and almost crying, trying to call her back when flip phones were a thing. It wasn't easy when you were shaking. I keep hearing a man's voice that I've never heard, and of course, the kids are both awake and crying. I get through to the mom, and a dude answers and goes, Sav, it's just us. Open the door. Apparently, his phone died, and the ex called the mom and had a horrible conversation. She was a mess, along with her kid now, and they just sat in the bathroom crying. Like, what awful timing. To be fair, they were probably all a bit intoxicated. The boyfriend and I did baby duty to let mom sleep. He was a great dude, and they eventually married, had the most adorable baby girl, and moved out of state. Ex-husband just ghosted them one day, probably for the better. I was babysitting two kiddos at nighttime, a toddler and a seven or eight year old, while the parents were on a date. It was late, kids were sleeping, and I was downstairs doing homework. I heard this blood-curdling, shrieking scream coming from upstairs that I'll never get out of my memory. I ran up and into the older boy's room who was hysterically screaming but laying down still with his eyes closed and grabbing the sheets flailing around. I yelled his name and tried to hold him but he kept screaming and freaking out with tears coming out of his eyes waving his arms. It was the most bizarre thing I've seen like a possession. After a few minutes of this the screaming stopped and he just laid back down asleep. I called his parents obviously really shaken and they failed to tell me he gets horrible night terrors. I had never seen anything like that. That's going to have to do it for this episode. If you guys liked this video, be sure to give us a like and a subscribe. It helps us out immensely and it lets us know what kind of content you guys are interested in seeing. Until next time, peace.